Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous Sunday, Sunday morning. We are glad you're here uh, celebrating Christ. There's going to be an awful lot of good things happening in worship. We will be receiving new members. And since we are receiving new members, we're going to have a party down in the fellowship hall afterwards on, in, in your honor. And so uh, uh, come on down after worship and, and have some great food and fellowship and, and meet our newest folks. There's an, uh, an incredible amount going on in the life of our congregation, so please note everything in the bulletin. Uh, a reminder, September 8th is Rally Sunday. Uh, Sunday school starts in fervor. All the Sunday school classes and children and everything, it's going to be a hoot. So uh, make sure to keep that in mind. I do have an announcement to make. Community Care is offering a fundraising opportunity September 14th from 6 to 9. Uh, it's at the American Legion Hall. It's a, it's a night of games and, 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 and fun, but it, is, it does go towards uh, uh, supporting community care in North Ridgeville. I have tickets. If, you would like, if you'd like to purchase tickets from me, they are $25 each or two for $40. With that, Liz, since we're talking about money, might as well bring you up. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, for our July, what we did for July was we had an income of 25,843. Our budget is 30,054, so we have a deficit of 4,211. And our year-to-day income is 192,803. Our budget is 210. 378, so we have a deficit of 17,000. Our parking lot fund, though, is up to $19,000. So that's good, I'm glad to see that. All of our bills and apportionments are paid, and our apportionments are also paid now for August. So that's good, too, we're ahead of the game. And I'd like to thank you for supporting the work of the Lord. You make it possible. Also, we're going to be doing corn tomorrow for our roast beef dinners. And if you have an hour or two hours or all day, we'd like to have you come and help us. We need people to shuck the corn. We need people to take the corn off the cob and things. So if you have a little bit of time, we would appreciate it. Thank you. OK, thank you, Liz. Gosh, it would be a whole lot easier to buy frozen corn. Sorry. <laughs> I, saw, I heard all the groans. <laughs> Judy? Good morning. I'm going to be uh, tootling the flute a little bit this morning, and since I can't sing and play at the same time, which you can be very glad for, um, I'm going to tell you just a, a brief bit about the two songs I'm playing. During the offertory, I'm playing We Fall Down, Chris Tomlin's piece. We fall down and lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of his mercy at the feet of Jesus, and we cry, holy is the lamb. For the special music, I'm doing a, a Martin Smith piece named uh, Sing to the North. Men and women of faith rise up, sing to the broken hearts for the healing power of the king of love, will fill us with a deep love. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all. Thanks, Judy. Mm -hmm. Or should I say maestro? With that, let us greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Judy. Good morning again. Today we are going to be singing our call to worship, so would you please stand as you are able and turn to your Faith We Sing book, page uh, 2031, and this will be We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. now have our opening prayer. Eternal God, thank you for reaching out to us in our time of need, our rock and our salvation. Please give us sufficiency of faith to know that you have promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now our opening hymn is in our regular hymnal number 261, Lord of the Dance.
may be seated. This morning is quite a celebration. Uh, during uh, both of our worship times, we're receiving new members into the local church, and it's a wonderful time to, to celebrate because we are truly one body in Christ. And, and this morning, we gather to welcome Rick and Susie Jan. So Rick and Susie, come on up. And if you would all please take the, the white sheet out of your bulletin and follow along where, where it's indicated in the bowl, that would be, that'd be wonderful. Rick and Susie have been coming for the last several months, I believe. And uh, they've enjoyed worship, enjoyed the fellowship, and are excited about being part of the life of the church. And so we, uh, we certainly welcome them. But before we do that, I just have a few questions I need to ask them. On, be on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power it gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened the people of all ages, nations, and races? Now, do you... As Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Amen. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you? As we talked last week and let you know again, that last statement and that affirmation from the congregation, you've been prayed for from the very first time you you came to this church and prayed for every week and every day since, and we'll continue to pray. So with that, let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of both the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I You believe in the Holy Spirit. Susie, remember your baptism and be faithful. As a person who's been born by water and spirit, may you continue to grow as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Rick, remember your baptism, that being born by water and spirit, that you may continue to be, uh, to be a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. forgot two questions here. Yeah. I looked at that and said, I better not forget these two questions, otherwise the bishop's going to call me. That'd be time I might have to listen. Two questions. 
As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Welcome to the Congregation of Fields United Methodist Church. Welcome our newest members. And be sure to greet Rick and Susie after worship down with uh, cake and cookies and punch and good times. There are many joys that surround us and we, and we pray for the joys, we pray for the ongoing ministries of everything that's happening in the life of our church and, and as children are getting back to school we also need to pray for them as well for safety and, and also to gain knowledge and wisdom and all that fun stuff and, and we pray for our teachers. Uh, we pray for, for all that they do for our, for our children, also administrators and, and support staffs. And we pray for those who are returning to college, uh, travel blessings upon them as well. So uh, please keep all those folks in prayers. It's new beginnings for an awful lot of people here this time of year. Uh, please note those people on the prayer list. I have one to add. The family and friends of Clinton Langley, if you would uh, lift them up in prayer. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? Our friend's brother, David Slusher, in the hospital not doing well. Our neighbor, Marty, was on his motorcycle yesterday, no helmet, hit by a car in the huh. hospital. Prayers for David and Marty. Yes, I would like prayers for Celia. Celia turned 100 on August 3rd, and I just found out last night that she has pneumonia, so oh. she needs our prayers. Prayers for Celia. A former pastor um, has been missing since July 5th. He had just been released from the hospital for uh, treatment of a chemical imbalance. He left on his bike, no cell phone, no um, wallet, no identification, and they've been searching and nothing's shown up. And their name? Oh, George. George. Prayers for George. Um, my one friend, Julie, she lost her brother last week, and another friend of mine, um, Janine, she lost her niece. She died at the age of 21 on her birthday. Oh, boy. Please pray for my friend Mary Lou Peterson, who is going through treatment for colorectal cancer. Uh, they have had to take her off the um, treatment regimen that she's been on because it was too dangerous to her. Uh, she'll finish her radiation this week, and hopefully they'll be able to find a treatment that she will be able to tolerate. Her husband, Alan, uh, has been here with his uh, quartet to uh, offer special music for us several times in the past. Okay. And that's Mary Lou? Yes. Anyone else? Of course. Uh, a joy update. We have had Mary Goot on the prayer chain for some time with colon cancer and uh, we ran into her. She's doing quite well. She had her port taken out last week and um, she's really grown spiritually through all this and have found a lot of blessings. So continued prayers for her good health, but she has really been, been quite blessed and she's sharing that with all the people good. that she knows. Good. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious and ever-living God, our creator and author of our salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you have offered us a spectacular day, an amazing morning, 
a great opportunity to come to your house this day, on the Sabbath day, to give you praise and worship and celebrate all the things that you've offered to us. Lord, we know we don't deserve it, but you give nonetheless, Lord. And we give you eternal thanks and praise for the gift of salvation, especially through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this day is a time of celebration. We, we celebrate our new members in our midst now. We celebrate the, the fellowship that we share. We, we celebrate the mission and ministry of our church that reaches out beyond the walls, Lord God, and, uh, and, and invite folks to come closer to you. Lord, those are the things that are just incredible. We thank you for the gifts of stewardship. We give you thanks for, the, for all the gifts that you'd offer uh, to so many of us here this day. Lord God, we, we come to celebrate new beginnings in people's lives and uh, healings, and we, we pray certainly for those children returning back to school and the teachers that will be teaching them and, and all the administrators and support staff that, that make uh, education possible, Lord God. We just... We pray, we pray that that all goes well and smoothly and, 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 and children will learn as well as the teachers, Lord God. And we, we do pray your blessing upon each and every one of them. Uh, Lord God, uh, on a more global uh, level, we do pray for all those who are struggling worldwide, especially in the Middle East and in Egypt and Syria and all those places of, uh, where it's just uh, is quite unsettled, Lord God. Would you pray for your peace? Uh, Lord, we pray for our great nation and our leaders, that they may lead with your word on their lips. Lord, we pray for our community leaders and, and, and all those folks that, that, that just make our communities go. Uh, Lord God, we, we pray for those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. We pray for those who can't be here this morning, those who are sick and homebound, hospitalized. We pray for those who are anxious in their faith, frustrated in their faith, or just plain angry, Lord God. We just, we just pray that you soothe that anger, Lord God, just not worth it. Offer them the peace and comfort in knowing that you are firmly in charge. Lord God, we pray for all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, Lord, and especially we lift up to you the family and friends of Lisa Hamilton and the family and friends of Clinton Langley and the others so mentioned here that this morning, Lord God, we just pray that their grief turns to joy um, in the certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we also lift up to you David and Rose and Matt, for Kathy and Karen and Kellen and Bridget, for Craig and Amy and, and Celia, for Amy and Kurt and Tommy and Jimmy and Carrie and Rich and Julie, for June May, for Mary Lou uh, and Alan, um, George and all those other folks, Lord, we either lift it up to you by voice or deep within our hearts. Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that they may be guided by your Holy Spirit um, to be healed in body and in spirit. Lord God, for all those who are, who are struggling with issues and questions and, and uncertainties, we just pray for comfort and we also pray for wisdom. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Old Testament from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, like Isaiah, was a young man called by God to warn Judah about its wickedness. He spent the first 20 years of his ministry under Josiah, a good king who tried to bring the people of Judah back to God. After this, Jeremiah was often in danger from political and religious leaders who were angry because of his messages. Through all this, God protected Jeremiah so he could continue to warn the wicked and comfort those who trusted in God. This then is the call of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, 
Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everywhere I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the reading of the Old Testament. Will our ushers please now come forward so that may we, we may serve the Lord with our offerings.
thank you for the gifts of, of stewardship the, and the gifts of serving, Lord God. We pray your blessing upon each and every gift that we offer to you, that it may be used for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Judy, for sharing your gifts of the Spirit as a flutist or a flautist or a flute player. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Come on down. You're the only ones, that's true, but you're awful special. So I'm glad you both are here. I have a story to tell you. When I was really little, about your size, I used to go to church every Sunday. And I went to church every Sunday with my family. And I would sit in the pew, and my mom would be sitting next to me. And I, for some reason, I just started laughing. <laughs> laughing in church. My mother would look at me, and you know how some people go like this, right before they start to laugh? And she started to laugh. And I started to laugh some more. And she started to laugh some more. And so after church, somebody came up to us and said, well, what's so funny you're in church? I don't remember how I answered that question, but you know what, how I would answer it now? Because church is about celebrating. It's about joy. Sunday is a great time to come in. Isn't Sunday a great day? And what do you do on Sunday? You, co you come to church and pray. What else do you do? Yeah, well, that's okay. Um, yeah, you do all kinds of fun stuff. You see, God wants us to have fun. God wants us to take everything that God's given us and have fun and enjoy our life. And sometimes Sunday or Sabbath day is a time that we, we step back and, 
and we get to know God a little bit better. You know what I think when I was sitting in, in the pew when I was just a little, little boy and starting to laugh? You know what I think God may have been telling me? That maybe, maybe God wants us to laugh a little bit more. Maybe God wants us to have fun, especially on Sunday morning. You know, when we come to celebrate all he's done for us. And so, I like the laugh. You like the laugh? I love the laugh. Yeah, <laughs> you're laughing now. <laughs> well, and that's a good thing. See, that's contagious. Everybody else starting to laugh too. Yeah, yeah, see? Well, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for joy. Thank you for Sunday mornings that we can come to your house and, and pray and sing, but also to laugh a little bit and just, uh, and just celebrate and have fun with, with everything you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up. Glad you were here this morning. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us more. God, may your Holy Spirit fall afresh on us this morning. As we hear your word read and proclaimed, may our hearts be filled with joy, celebration, and renewal. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me, or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel lessons from St. Luke's Gospel, the 13th chapter, beginning in the 10th verse. Now he was teaching in, in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But... The leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The fifth commandment clearly states, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And it goes on and then completes, you shall not do any work. Now Jesus, the fulfillment of this law, seems to be raising to the leaders of the church this question. So what exactly is holy? And how do we honor the Sabbath, the Lord's Day? So the leaders, the rules police, the this is the way we've always done it, folk. The I will tell you how to serve God, even on the Sabbath people, had other ideas than Jesus. Sabbath time had its genesis in Genesis, where God created for six days, and then the scripture says he kicked back on the seventh day and rested. 
and he did no work, and he looked back and said everything looked really good that he did. Okay, good enough. So it sounds like that's what we ought to do as well. Tradition in Christianity is clear. Set aside Sabbath. Some call today the Lord's Day. I would say every day is the Lord's Day, but this is a special day, and it truly is. But the church would set aside Sunday mornings, Sundays for no work, some would even say you can't play. You can't play basketball. You can't play football. You can't play baseball. No golf, no tennis, no nothing. Down south where we began serving the Lord as, as, a, as a pastor, there was folks who would cook on Saturday night so they wouldn't have to cook on Sunday because they weren't allowed to cook on Sunday. But the witness that Jesus offers to us this morning offers another definition of what Sabbath is all about. Rather than a day of controls, a day of rules, Jesus proclaims what it is to keep the Sabbath holy. And I think that's the imperative, what to do to keep the Sabbath time holy. It's all about giving glory to God. In other words, it's not about us. It's about God. So when we need to ask the question, why not? Why not heal on the Sabbath? So often so many well-meaning people tend to identify Christianity as a set of rules to live by, and that really saddens my heart to hear that. And if they say, by God, if you don't live by the set of rules that we are prescribing, and have the proper interpretation of Scripture, as we have identified, then for all eternity you're going to suffer. I've heard that before. What a burden to carry. What a terrible burden to carry. What price to pay. God's commandments are important. God's commandments are imperative. Imperative. A commandment is a commandment and not a suggestion. There is no question about that. You live by the Ten Commandments and you will have joy. But those Ten Commandments, not the least of which is the fifth, was not intended to muzzle the ox. It was not intended to, to be a hindrance to living a holy life. So often we cast God's laws as absolute prohibitions, as a set of rules that, that hinder and control rather than set free. So this morning, let's consider another approach. Let's consider a fresh approach to Sabbath, offered by the one who hung on the cross so we can have a new life and another chance at life. Maybe what Jesus is talking about here is that we are to honor the Sabbath by celebrating God. Celebrating God by celebrating life. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Not to be subversive, but first and foremost to heal the woman who had been sick for 18 long years. But through the healing, Jesus also illustrated the hypocrisy of those who, who use the law of God to control and, and to see how God's law is actually the only prerequisite to a deep and abiding relationship with God. Who said in order to have faith, we need to be hindered. You know, as I was praying last night and early this morning about the sermon, I thought about uh, the raising of Lazarus and how Jesus stood at the tomb and said, Lazarus, come out, remember that? But there was a couple other phrases in that, in that text that really struck me. In, in, in prayer this morning, and it was, 
What did he say? He said, folks, unbind him and let him go. Let him go and do what? Celebrate God. Joyfully proclaim the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And if that involves healing on the Sabbath, guess what? That's okay. What better way to consecrate the Lord's day than doing the Lord's work? To reach out in Christian love for those around us. God's law, again, is not intended to control, rather to guide us towards a closer relationship with God. And as we become closer to God, we feel the freedom of our faith, not the restrictions of our faith. So what is Sabbath? It is a time during the week that we step back from our day-to-day -day living to change direction, to reconnect a little bit, to slow our lives down. I'd imagine sitting here for an hour and going to have cookies and, and, and stuff down the hall in a few minutes, that's, that's a little different than what you usually do during the week, isn't it? That's a good thing. Sabbath is a time to reconnect with God. Sabbath is a time to deepen our relationship with God. The one who seeks for us to truly know the joy of that relationship. Saints, that's what worship is all about. Like I was telling the kids, Mom and I would be laughing in church, and folks would be looking at us and what are you laughing about? Somebody I remember saying actually said, why are you so happy? What do you mean? God created me. I didn't say this then. I was only four or five. But I say it now. God created me. God redeemed me. God set me free. Why not laugh? Why not be joyous? Why not celebrate? Leave all that junk at the foot of the cross. Celebrate. That's what Sabbath is all about. Sabbath is about celebrating the blessings that God has given us, the joy of believing, the joy of being in Christ and celebrating eternal life. And by the way, eternal life does not begin when you die. It begins when you give yourself to Christ and you begin your life anew. We are called to celebrate every day. Granted, some days are more challenging than others. But even still, we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing to give glory to God? How are we backing off and celebrating the Sabbath in our own lives? Whether it be Sunday morning or whether it be a time away. See, I think you can take little bits and pieces of Sabbath every day. You know, we early morning people like that Sabbath time, that 4.30 to 5. Most people don't call at that time in the morning, by the way. And, and, that's, a, and that's a good time for some, to get closer to God, to reconnect, to reestablish. That's what Sabbath is all about. That's what Sabbath is all about. To take a break from the day to day, come back to God, to make time to be holy. And to be holy means just to be set apart and be in a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lord. So how do we take the time? Jesus often went and took breaks from his day to day. Sometimes we have to break that, whatever it is. Walter Willett wrote a great book called Eat, Drink, and Be Healthy. And in the book he advocates adjusting eating habits, you know, healthier eating habits, but, and I love this chapter, by the way, and I love this but in the book, but every once in a while, <laughs> you got to give yourself a break. I translated that to be a hot dog in a blizzard from Dairy Queen. <laughs> and then to get back to that other stuff. We need to take a break 
from the whirlwind of life and allow God in. And that's what Sabbath is all about. Sabbath is all about uh, bringing God in. Feeling the joy of believing. Coming to worship on Sunday morning and, and just reconnecting with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords uh, through the fellowship of others. We are the body of Christ and there's a reason we're a body of Christ because we need each other. We need to come here. And sometimes what happens in Sabbath and after Sabbath facilitates healthy changes. Sometimes it facilitates healthy changes in tradition. Sometimes it's healthy changes in, in what we do during the week to draw us closer to God. You know, we serve a God that's dynamic. We serve a God that, that will be with us through the journey that we have right now in this life. And we have to have a God that's dynamic because our world is dynamic, isn't it? I read an article 10 years ago that, that information doubles every 18 months. I imagine now it's probably doubling every six months. That's what's happening in the world. Things are changing mightily all around us, and God is in the midst of all that. We need to take time, reconnect with God, to get the wisdom and, and get the encouragement to, to continue even through these days. And as we draw closer to God, especially in Sabbath time like this, our relationship with God deepens. And then truly we see every day is the Lord's day. We, see, we can't wait the Sabbath time. We can't, I can't wait the Sunday morning, by the way. I can't wait to be here. I can't wait to be here with all of you celebrating God. But also, when you get into that mindset, you can't wait to take time away and be with God. That's the thing. That's the beauty. You see, living a holy life, making the Sabbath holy, is a lifestyle, not a set of rules. But it's about grace, it's about joy. Sabbath and church traditions have never been intended to be control mechanisms, rather means towards greater freedom in Christ. Sabbath does not mean we're asleep at the wheel, and, and I know we're drawing late and it's donut time coming up. But I, I just thought about Psalm 121 and what it doesn't say. Let's see. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, except on Sunday. He will not let your foot be moved, except on Sunday. He who keeps you will not slumber and sleep. Doesn't say except on Sunday, does it? The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Guess what? God is alive and well seven days a week, 24 hours a day, doing the work of God, celebrating every moment of our existence, and we are called to do the same thing. We are called to celebrate God seven days a week, take time to be holy, uh, take time to be joyous, and as we take that time, that's going to that's gonna bleed out into the rest of our lives. So the question, again, as we conclude this morning, why not have fun in worship? Why not heal? Why not do something fun on Sabbath? Why not come to worship and fully enjoy the experience? So saints, remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Keep it fun. Keep it joyous by whatever means necessary. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now stand and sing our hymn of invitation, number 367, He Touched Me.
love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen.